Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rentway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for December 15th, 2022. Well, we finally got past that FOMC, and I think we've got a disappointed market as a result of the Fed um, statements. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of a bearish morning starting to set up here today. So what does that mean going forward from here? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly, truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, as I have been mentioning, this price range that we're seeing in here on the Dow is pretty substantial, and that makes for a very risky situation here for traders because we're looking at um, a Dow point move of about 1300 points between these lines. And obviously we're capable of whipsawing that full distance um, very quickly uh, because of the emotion in this market. Well, yesterday we had some um, some news obviously that the market didn't like very much. The market was um, hoping for a pivot. They were hoping for a, um, a dovish Fed and instead what they got is a rather hawkish Fed um, suggesting that um, they're going to continue um, raising rates um, through next year and um, be seeking a new higher target rate for interest rates of 5.1%. So looking um, looking at the Dow here, you can see we are pressing down. We had a little bit of a spinning top doji in here yesterday. Volume has, um, has been good the last three days here in the Dow, but certainly very, very volatile um, as a result. And what we're looking at right now is this pullback right into here. And, and so let's watch, look at this carefully. If we were to hold this level, I think we're fine. Um, holding this price support area in here, there's a big area right through here to hold. But the problem would be, would be if we were to fail that area, if the bears find inspiration and we've got a big day of economic data coming our way, if the bears find inspiration here and we crack that level, I think that's where we could truly start to see fear really creep up in the market and probably the deflation of this hoped for Santa Claus um, rally uh, to push on through it. It might, uh, the air might come out of that pretty quickly. So if those bears find that um, inspiration in, in here, then I would look for a push down into this level. Now, unfortunately, that's gonna be a pretty substantial move down in price. Um, could be pretty painful if we were to make that move all at once. And let's take a look at our technicals here in our chart. You can see that we could even move further than that. Um, right down into here is where I drew that line. And you could see we could still move further just to come down and contact that 200 day moving average and 50 day moving average in the chart, which would be a, a pretty darn painful move. If we take a look, um, if I measure this from the Dow and um, assuming, let's just use the low of yesterday and come down into this level, that's 1250 points on the Dow. So that would be a pretty painful uh, pullback if that were to occur. Now, if those bulls happen to find inspiration and we can continue to hold this support in here, then the, uh, an upside move, I would suggest, um, an upside move, then we would push back up and maybe start attacking some of these levels up in here again on the diamond. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely. I think we're in kind of a critical situation here at this point. Not so much in the Dow, but in other indexes. And let's take a look at that. If we take a look at our SPY, our SPY still popping around in this uncomfortable range. If you'll notice right up in here, we have failed at our downtrend line here in the chart. And we've done that in a pretty ugly 
uh, fashion, um, kind of a double top high right here at the downtrend. And then we went on through and we gave up that little support level right in there on the chart. And we're pressing back down here toward this very critical support level in price action. So it's going to be extremely important for us to hold this level. I think if we lose this level, there's going to be an awful lot of confidence lost in the market. And like I said, I think the hope of the Santa Claus rally will diminish really fast if this area right in here breaks. Now you'll notice if the bears find inspiration and push down through that level, then we've got some support levels down in here, but it's going to get really painful on that pullback. Now let's take a look real quickly at those technicals here in the chart. And you can see if we were to push down through that price level right here, there's that 50 day moving average. So we've got a little bit of 50 day moving average support in there along with those price action moves that could potentially hold us. But you can see after that, it gets pretty, uh, pretty ugly um, in these charts. Now, you'll also want to notice that what we have done is we have um, failed our upside trend at the moment. So it's gonna be very critical that we hold this support area or this could get uh, pretty nasty pretty fast now if with with the data today if the bulls can find inspiration and we do hold this area of support and can push up then we'll look for an um, another attack back up in here by those bulls to see if they can retest these levels in the chart and hold so pretty rough um, setup here for to today on the SPY but you know uh, there's um, still reason for hope that we can hold on to the support levels. Now let's take a look at our QQQ. I think our QQQ is probably the most dangerous of them all here at the moment. You'll, you'll notice here QQQ didn't actually make it all the way up there even to test the downtrend here in the chart. And you know, you might look at this, you can see obviously we broke this to a new high, but it didn't hold. So you might look at this as almost like a triple um, failure here um, up in this area of the chart. And you can see we're getting really, really close to this support area in price. I could pull that down just a little bit to include those little tails in here. Um, on that price action but you can see if we lose that area here in the qqq we don't have a whole lot of support except the lows of the year here in the nasdaq and if we push on down there might be a little bit of support right down in this area but um, pretty painful if we move on through. So this is gonna be a, a very critical hold for those bulls. Now, technically, if we look at this, that's also gonna be breaking the 50-day moving average. So um, obviously not the best situation here for the market, um, probably an uncomfortable situation uh, for those folks that were really hoping for a big Santa Claus rally if that fails. However, if our data today does better than expected, and we um, can actually hold this level in here, then maybe a push back up to attack some of these levels here in the chart would be appropriate to be looking for um, for that bounce back up here in the NASDAQ. So watch this level closely. This one here I think is probably the most critical on the day because a failure here of the QQQ would probably really embolden the bears. If we were to look at our IWM, well IWM has already created that problem for us um, here in the chart. You'll notice that this support level um, that we've been kind of looking at um, in the other indexes has already failed. And what we did here the other day is we failed through that support, we rallied back up, we attacked again another failure up here along that downtrend line in IWM. But here's the unfortunate thing. Downtrends are created when we create lower lows followed by lower highs. And so we did not, as we didn't um, hold on to the support level once we bounced back up there. And so the concern today would be that we would actually follow through with this move. Um, lower low, 
um, excuse me, lower high followed by a lower low, and we would officially um, uh, be in a technical downtrend here in the chart. So where do we go if we break that low? Well, I think it's pretty obvious we would come right down into here probably to test a little bit of price support in that area of the chart. So it's not like a wipeout type move um, um, that we might see in some of the other indexes, but we'll want to watch that closely. Clearly we have given up that upside trend and we failed here at that trend as well. Um, technically we're really starting to break down um, some of these um, some of these charts um, so we'll want to be pretty darn careful and keeping in mind if we fail on through that area well there's just not a whole lot there's certainly price points in here that we could grab onto and hold but obviously um, uh, technically it'd be a pretty rough situation for the market and if we take a look at our um, moving averages here a failure um, in this area would or a follow through today would really cement that failure of the 50 day moving average here in IWM. So pretty rough situation here on those indexes. If we take a look at our VIX, our VIX looking at this now, obviously a little bit of pressure and pain here in the market um, at the close of the day yesterday. Um, but um, what's interesting is our VIX fell we've been getting some very, very odd readings in, in the VIX. Um, the other day we had fear spike up when we were moving up in the market. Really odd uh, price action here in the VIX. And I'm not sure what that means. But one thing that I can kind of point out here that I think we should all be paying attention to and what that would be, if you take a close look, there's a possibility that we're forming an inverted head and shoulders pattern here on the VIX. And you'll notice that we've broken that downtrend and we still run that possibility that we could hold some of this price support in here. With the bearishness that we see this morning in the pre-market, as a matter of fact, right now, the Dow Jones futures are suggesting a decline of 237 points um, at the open. Um, now, that'll change quite a bit because I'm recording this video a little bit early today. And by the way, there is no blog today because of an early appointment that I have. So watch this closely. Um, if we were to continue to fail here, that would be good for the bulls. And um, that would suggest that no fear here and that potential bounce could occur. But you could certainly see that possibility with this pattern if we were to bounce up in here. How that fear could really start to perk up and, and uh, become a bit of an issue here uh, for the bulls. Now let's take a look at our T21 22. Our T2122 uh, pulled back yesterday um, 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 quite a bit here. Um, we were pressing up toward our um, bearish reversal zone. That's one of the things that this market it ma it makes it so dangerous is these huge point moves that we're seeing and their emotional moves as well, well, where they're really quick, really nasty whipsaws to punish uh, folks chasing things around. Now this morning with the gap down, we could be pushing down here to that bearish reversal, or excuse me, bullish reversal zone. And it's been a long time since we completed a pattern down here to that bullish reversal, reversal zone. So watch that closely. Unfortunately, we'll be taking out a bunch of those technical patterns here in the chart to get that done. We'll wanna watch that closely. now. Um, if we reach down in here, look for that opportunity that we could catch some bounce if there's no pylon effect from the market data here today. So watch that carefully. If the bulls, however, happen to find inspiration in that data and we don't make it down here, then we'll look for that bounce back up here again. And, and it could be a substantial point move again, making those whipsaws very, very painful to try and manage your way through. So just be very, very careful. There's just not a whole lot of edge that a technical trader can have here in the market, except for really quick intraday uh, trades. And um, I talk to a lot of intraday traders that even tell me that this is just almost unmanageable the way this is moving. So be very, very careful. Now, if we take a look at our T2108, 
T2108 pulled back yesterday. As you would expect, we had a little bit of pressure here, but not so much as to really break things down. Um, so I'm still giving the edge here um, to the bulls on this. They haven't really cracked this um, support area in the in the chart, which means maybe we can hold on to those support levels in um, those indexes. We'll want to watch that closely. Now, if you look about 56% of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. So you really can't look at that as a, as a bearish uh, chart at the moment. Um, if we take a look at our T2107, whoops, our T2107, well, let me get T2107. Um, our T2107 pulled back just a little bit yesterday, but not not enough to create any damage here at all um, in that chart. So once again, I have to give this um, indicator up to the bulls because they're holding in on these support levels, not giving up much ground. So again, if we can get some better data coming our way, well, maybe um, we can hold those support levels and, and experience a little bit of that Santa rally here. Um, there is so much worry, however, in the market and so many warnings of recession next year that um, it, it may be... It, it, any Santa Claus rally may be very short-lived and it may not produce what I think a lot of folks are hoping for, potentially, or particularly after the FOMC disappointed them yesterday. So watch that closely. But that said, 44% of the stocks holding above their 200-day um, uh, moving average is certainly a major improvement of what we've seen, and I have to give that one to the bulls. Now, if we take a look at our T2101, T2101 has just been a mess. It's been whipping all over the place. Partially, it's been because of low volume. Ahead of this, we were just whipsawing on low volume. Now we're getting the volume, but we're not getting any directional um, clues in the price action. So T2101 not being very helpful here right now in showing us that momentum because we're shifting momentum so quickly back and forth. Now, one of the reasons that we're seeing this pressure here this morning, I don't know if you caught the news on this or not, but China um, had some bad data um, last night. The retail sales, um, they were expecting it to decline 3.7% um, out of China. It fell 5.9% in November. So a much larger decline over there in China and their industrial production, it grew by 2.2%, but it missed the forecast of 3.6%. So a lot slower growth over there in China. And interestingly enough, um, their uh, Bureau of Statistics um, just arbitrarily uh, apparently canceled the press conference um, after the data was supposed to come out and they left no explanation. I guess they just didn't want to answer any questions about it. So some major problems continuing to occur over there in China. Um, that economy is slowing down dramatically and um, that's likely going to be a little bit of a problem um, for us here in the United States as well. It's really showing the demand destruction and that potential recession building here um, in the market. So keep a close eye on that. Um, let's take a look. Uh, by the way, pre-market Europe is uh, not pre-market, but early morning in Europe, European markets are all lower as well here uh, today. Um, let's take a look at that um, earnings, or excuse me, economic calendar, what I've been referencing here this morning about all this data. We have a huge amount of data coming out here today. We heard uh, Jerome Powell talk specifically about the, the uh, problems, um, the tightness in the jobs market, and yet, we're still not seeing any declines or, or increases in those jobless claims. As a matter of fact, consensus is suggesting that remains flat here this week. So keep an eye on that. A, a, a better, a, a hotter number than what consensus is, is expecting, meaning more jobs created, 
than what it's ex expecting would be bearish for the market this morning if it comes in less than uh, or i mean more um, jobless claims coming in um, then that would be bullish for the market um, it's one of those opposite things that's going on here right now and then as we move through these numbers um, industrial production retail sales empire state manufacturing um, or um, philly fed um, that industrial production business inventories and the natural gas report we've got a lot of data uh, coming our way now the good news is that a good portion of that uh, data is going to be um, after the bell and maybe we can get some reaction actions to that to actually respond to by trading. Uh, three of those uh, numbers here this morning will be out before the bell, meaning that we could have substantial gap up or substantial gap down in the market in reaction to those numbers and not much we can do about that. And then later on in the day, we've got Treasury International and the Fed balance sheet, which probably won't um, be much of a market mover. And as you plan forward, we've got another market mover Friday morning. We've got um, PMI flash, and then we've got a quadruple witch um, as well, where we're going to have a lot of expiring um, options. Um, uh, quarterlies will be expiring. Um, futures will be expiring. And um, that's going to typically create a additional dose of volatility. So um, kind of be careful and watch for that. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today. Now our earnings calendar, we have, um, oh, there's probably eight or 10 confirmed, but the majority of those that are confirmed are not exactly, you know, market moving. We've got stocks like um, YCBD um, reporting today, a 37 cent stock. So um, not much there. Now before the bell, the first um, JBL, will be the notable for this morning. We'll want to keep an eye on that. JBL will be reporting here um, um, this morning before the bell. And then we've got Adobe. Um, um, it'll be our most notable after the bell today. Um, keep an eye on Adobe later on. And, and other than that, guys, there really isn't much of anything in there. Um, to be particularly notable. There are some bigger stocks, but they trade with such low volume, they're not particularly notable. So those are your notables for today. Let's take a look at um, um, some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube. Also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor, and that would be click those thumbs up buttons, leave that brief comment, helps the channel to continue to grow. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you for those that continue to share these videos out on your social media feed. Um, the channel is continuing to grow and um, the credit goes to you for that help and support. So thank you very, very much. Let's take a look at a few charts and remember here, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful in this market. There are some clues that we could start experiencing more downside coming here soon. So be very, very careful. Now, a couple places that I think have been quite interesting. We've been watching that US dollar um, decline. Well, we've got a little bit of a pop maybe starting to happen in the US dollar here this morning. So we'll wanna watch that carefully. A pop in the US dollar uh, moving up could um, certainly cause a little bit of downside pressure in the market as well. Watch that right in here. We've got this downtrend that we've been moving in in the US dollar and we've got this support area here that we could be responding a little bit bullishly to. Now that's not to suggest that the US dollar just zooms right back up probably just a little bit of price action movement in here that will test some resistance and maybe see if we can pop it, break it and hold for a little bit, but watch that carefully. Now, if that occurs, um, then I would expect that we would see a pretty substantial move down in gold. Gold has been moving up in a very sharp move to the upside. Right now, gold futures are down 
$29 an ounce. And we may actually, looking at the pre-market candle right here, we may actually break this little upside trend. But I don't know that that's critical just yet because we have quite a little bit of price support out here in the chart to be paying attention to. We've needed a little rest or pullback in here. We need a little calming is what we need um, in the market. And then I would continue to keep an eye on that potential GLD because I see um, a, a uh, a real problem coming next year where we could see um, uh, that weakening dollar continue to add um, um, some upside pressure here to uh, gold and also silver. So watch those closely. Other places that I think you might want to be taking a look at, um, uh, as you guys know, I've been mentioning utilities, XOU holding in there very, very strong, um, continuing to move in that upside trend, resting the last couple of days here um, in that chart. But I think what we're starting to see here, guys, is a rotation into dividend players and safety plays and utilities are good strong dividend players so watch or payers so watch that carefully um, if that continues to move in that upside trend there may be another opportunity here um, speaking of those dividend payers take a look at stocks like coke they just are continuing to grind higher we're pushing a, a resistance level here in the chart that is really substantial but we've been seeing an awful big push into these defensive sector stocks and those strong dividend payers. Um, and I think that rotation here is underway where institutions are really moving to a little bit more safety um, here in the market. Um, other places, if you take a look at like um, Colgate Palmolive, up at a nice upside trend, continuing to move up in that trend. Um, Clorox has been bouncing around here pretty rough. Um, you can see um, dealing with a price resistance level in the chart. Big old bearish candle there on um, um, Wednesday and we tried to bounce back up here, um, or excuse me, on Tuesday, uh, bounce back up here on Wednesday. That one, the jury's still out on this one, but you could certainly look at stocks like Altria. Um, looks like Altria, tr big old pop and drop in the pre-market here um, on Altria um, this morning. Keep a look um, at that. Um, Philip Morris also holding up in here nicely. Um, KHC has been breaking through, broke through some major resistance, continuing to move on up. So watch some of these defensive sector stocks. There's quite a few of them to be paying attention to. Um, another place that I do think is pretty interesting here in the um, in the market is um, Taiwan Semiconductor. If you'll notice in here, this big break of this trend here in Taiwan Sem Semiconductor, we're holding support um, right now in that chart. So I would watch this closely. I don't, I'm not saying it's ready for prime time yet, but if it can continue to hold here and bounce up, then I would be interested in maybe picking some of that up. You might want to watch some of these um, um, big dividend payers in telecommunications. They've had rough pullback here in the last few days and they could lose this support, but you can see overall in this pattern, that's been a pretty strong level of support and hold that possibility that this picks back up and again, good strong dividend payers in there to be looking at. Um, um, one last place is I still think these bonds um, might be um, an interesting place to look. I'm expecting a little bit more rest consolidation possibly to occur in here, but we've come up out of these bottoms looking good. You might look at tip. Uh, tip bonds trying to respond here just a little bit, um, breaking through some lows. Now, clearly we have a downtrend that we're still dealing with here on tips bonds, so maybe not quite ready just yet, but I do think it's worth watching. So there's quite a few for you to look at today. I apologize, this video has gone a little bit long this morning, but because there's no blog, I wanted to explain just a few more things. I hope you have a fantastic day. Watch this market carefully, plan carefully. Remember, if, you, if the money is safe and secure in your account, you have no chance of losing it. Now, of course, you have no chance of making additional money either. But when you don't see much edge in the market, keeping that money safe, 
probably um, the best business decision if you don't see an edge here. Be very, very careful, guys. Trade wisely. I want to wish you a fantastic day, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Take care, everyone.